Hello, Mireille Kenana. Welcome to Manuel Trujillo Duran Film Festival, the oldest festival we are running in Venezuela, which is, um, which is organized by the University of Zulia. And it is very uh, lovely for us because in Maracaibo, where the university is, um, is settled, it was the first time we had a movie projection in Venezuela. So it was the first place we had uh, cinema. So we welcome you to our community. And we hope you enjoy this, uh, this uh, experience with us. And of course, in the future, we hope that you come here again and with another project. So let's talk more about you. Where are you now? Uh, we are in Poland, <laughs> in the Polish mountains, in my parents' house. So, yeah, welcome to our library. <laughs> uh, it's a very beautiful place. It's already looking so good. So we wanted to talk, I, I wanted to tell you that I love your film. Uh, I mean, it was like poetry to watch it. The photography, the acting, the setting, the director, uh, movements uh, were incredible. Uh, it looked not like a student film, it looks like a very experienced filmmakers going through their, you know, their process. So um, I really, really enjoyed it. It's the kind of film that I, that I'm connected with immediately. Um, I wanted to ask you, what was your inspiration to that movie? How do you find the story? Mm, so uh, I think I can translate because my English is quite good, so it will be better. <laughs> uh, you, are, you are doing great. You are doing great. <laughs> right. No, it's not a question. Now, the inspiration was the region from which I come from, which is the same as the culture of the Lodowa, which is from the local people. The inspiration was the images that I found in the region of the Bielszczady here in the region, where the ghost was painted in the Lodowa, which is the same as the original photography. Piece by piece. <laughs> so um, the, the main inspiration was the because we come from two different region of, regions of Poland. And he comes um, from, from a region which is full of lakes and very beautiful and very wild by nature region, which is called Varmia. And uh, the biggest inspiration for this film was uh, Varmia's nature and, mm. and, uh, and the cultural background he's, he's from and uh, folk stories you could find them there and the other inspiration was the region from where i come because <laughs> uh, he has found a guy a painter who paints uh, paintings on some uh, on stables on the wooden buildings and uh we started to think, well, he started to think, uh, what would it be if, if it would be somehow connected? How, uh, mm. What would be the reason to this person who paints something to exist in some kind of magical world? It is really magical what you did over there in the story. And um, how do you come with all that scenes? Uh, so beautiful, the photography was uh, captivating to me. Uh, how did you work with your photographer? I mean, what was the plan? How did you plan the, those shootings? No, we just plan is that we looked at a lot of malarstwa, because we always work in this way. And I have also a very precise plan. Sorry. Okay. Co chcę, więc jakby cały film bez trzech ujęć, które znajdują się w tym filmie, był dokładnie narysowany tak, jak ma wyglądać, co też jakby było istotne jakby w procesie szukania lokacji. Nie wiem, że my szukaliśmy tak naprawdę, my też nie szukaliśmy tej lokacji w połowie roku. So, uh, Marek is a kind of a film director, which uh, plans everything. It is, is 
uh, organized enough to to search for lo exact locations for over a year, for example. So that was the wow. case. This past uh, this uh, sorry this film, the um, he and his friend uh, were driving through the through Varnia and searching for locations for over a year. And uh, he worked with Max Bugayek, which is a DOP in this project, uh, while uh, searching for exact um, paintings, inspirations in, uh, in um, albums, which he could find in libraries and bookstores. And uh, to be honest, only three shots in this film were not uh, planned with a lot of details before. So like all of them were were drawn, were were planned, were were exactly discussed how the lighting lighting will be, what the actors will be doing there. Like everything was was planned. Detail orientated. Oh. Well, well, since we are talking about what the actors did, I was wondering what was the experience because this is not the natural kind of acting we are used to see in a short film. This is more performatic kind of a, almost like a dance at some point, no? It was a, it was a challenge for you. How did you embrace that work? Uh, well, so... Uh... We met, actually, it's funny because we met in this project for the first time and now we're together. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, uh, so you can, you can see by this also like how powerful this project was. The connection, <laughs> yeah. But um, yes, so uh, I was just after the graduation uh, in my film school. Uh, in, for, uh, of course, I was graduating from acting, but it was uh, one of the first projects I was doing just after graduating and shutting the doors of my national film school. And um, I really wanted to do something different and to be free in my choices more than I, than I could be in my, my school sometimes. And... Um, and I knew I somehow felt that it would be nice for this project to go into this direction as we're telling a story of a girl who is kind of a witch, kind of a, an autistic person with some abilities. We found a lot of inspirations from Russian culture, uh, which has a lot of uh, enigmatic, magical, people there. Uh, there's a lot of people who are uh, connected to witchcraft, but also, also very um, intelligent in this nature style, you know, and, and we, were, we were searching those directions. And then all I had to do is to open my instrument mm -hmm. and my, my, like my body my voice my emotions and try to be somebody who is more of a figure of nature than than just an actress in some kind of circumstances i, I love that more like a figure of nature because you achieve that you both together are very powerful i wanted to know to tell you that if you don't know it, you're very powerful together. So it, it's a very good artistic match. So you said you were looking for locations for six months, for over a year, sorry, over a year. So how long it took you to finish the whole short? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> 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 It's like two talent. and a half years, yeah, I think. Because from the beginning to, to the end, from the uh, pre-production pre I think it was uh, more than two years, yeah. 
it, it took a lot, especially that um, the film was edited for a long, long time. Uh, as uh, well, I'll speak freely. I hope he doesn't mind. But um, uh, from what I understand, uh, doing this kind of cinema, slow cinema, is very uh, hard to achieve as it's very rhythm orientated. Wbrew pozorom, mimo tego, że mamy o wiele mniej materiału teoretycznie, mm-hmm. o wiele mniej ujęć w filmie, to jest dużo trudniejsze, tak mi się wydaje. Uh, what he says is that it's a, a lot harder for a filmmaker to do a, a film like that uh, um, because you have less material sometimes, because you have just those shots and you have to decide on exact seconds of the material you're using. And uh, it's really hard to create this rhythm which is slow but also tells some story and also is um, engaging you uh, that, that that needs a lot of focus and uh, and being calm while editing <laughs> and sitting you know in the monitor with the monitor and just cutting all the seconds and trying to it was a long process very long. Yeah, what was the biggest challenge you 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 face making the movie as a director? Największym wyzwaniem jest doprowadzenie do tego, żeby efekt finalny był jak najbliższy tego samego żywowie. Na to się składa wszystko. Nie ma jednej rzeczy. Um, he says the hardest thing uh, for a filmmaker is to create a film uh, practically which that matches uh, the plan you're, you have in your head. Because, um, you know, he, he is the person that likes to plan everything in, in a very detail. You know, you know I, I just told you and you have a lot of expectations and a lot of ideas and plans and it's really hard to 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 take those plans and and uh, try to make reality from this you know of course so what would you like people to feel after they watch your movie what would they be the emotions or the the the, the, the things they talk about after they see you short? The viewers, generally. Mm-hmm. No, raczej to chyba mamy dosyć dobre mam różne opinie. Wydaje mi się, że to, co najważniejsze, jakby, co usłyszałem od wielu osób, dla mnie jest najważniejsze, to że mm, nawet jeżeli ktoś w pełni nie zrozumiał tego filmu, albo mm-hmm. się zwierzę jakimś takim wyobrażeniem na temat tego filmu, kawałek od tego, co miałem ja, to nie mamy jakiegoś takiego poczucia krzywdy, bo każdemu, każdy, większość osób z sobą rozmawiałem, mówi o tym, że ten film w jakimś sensie zostaje, że on się jakby, mm-hmm. nawet jak się skończył, albo wychodzimy, to był piękny film, tylko że potem tak naprawdę zaczynają o nim myśleć i że to dla mnie jest jakaś taka wartość chyba największa. Tak. Uh, well, so um, there are people who don't really understand the whole story which is hidden in this film because um, there are some parts of the story you have to really think about, like what really happened there. <laughs> and uh, even though there are people who who don't get the whole picture, they still have uh, the feedback is they, they still have this film in mind that it stays. And, uh, and that is the most important for, for us as, as filmmakers. To, to, to make art which stays and makes you think and makes you intellectually engaged. Yeah, definitely. You, you achieve that too, because I cannot stop thinking about those images and the sensitivity that you put on it. So the colors and the, the, the delicacy, you, you are making poetry and I love that. So 
I want to know more about you. How can I follow your movie or yourself on Instagram or social media? I mean, that's something if you want to write it to me and then say we can share that information with our viewers. And uh, first we have we have Facebook page and Instagram of our of our movie, which is just the dreams of lonely people and you, you can find us. The and dreams of lonely people. I'm finding you guys. <laughs> lonely people yes and we are mostly published um well we we mostly focus on festivals and and trying to to um to talk about where where we are and and what countries are we visiting right now and where where you can find us in person and those festivals and and things like that but um well we both uh, we both work in film industry in poland and not only in poland uh, right now uh as adult filmmakers <laughs> after the student <laughs> film and uh so well and Marek is uh, now working on TV series in Poland and doing a lot of films and projects as a first AD. And um, I will have my big Netflix premiere. Uh, wow, congrats. Upcoming, thank you. In upcoming months. And the name of it is Krakow Monsters, which is like a fantasy series, original Netflix series from Poland. I'm looking forward to see more about you too. I'm sure you are going to have a very prosperous uh, career in the industry. So I'm going to keep your names. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you are a marvelous actress and you are a marvelous director. And we are so happy to have you here in the festival, Manuel Trujillo Duran. I hope this is not going to be the only time you're going to be here. And I wish you. Um, you know, to flourish everywhere you go, everywhere. I know you're not going to be just in Poland. You're going to conquer the world. So thank you so much for that movie that you made. Um, and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.